Good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to this week's Weekly Energy Boost. On today's show, we are talking about how you can have it all, and I'm here this morning with David Guillaume. We're David. going to learn secrets of how to remove limitations from our mind, what the Kabbalists share with us to, to uh, start doing this week as their support this week, to be able to manifest greater potential and not just to be stuck in the rat race. Absolutely. I can't wait for that. We, are, we, we prepare for the show by pouring over ancient tasks ancient texts with a modern day wisdom and our goal is to provide you our listeners with the most practical and most powerful secrets so that you can navigate through the next seven days of your life in the best way possible not only for you but for everyone around you and the entire world right. if you're listening to us on facebook and you have comments or questions for us also igtv and youtube you can put them in the comments if you are listening to a podcast you can email us at energyboost at kabbalah.com. We, we, last week, we got fabulous questions. We did. And uh, I actually, I want to start with a question. It's a great, I think it's a great segue into... Not only for you, but for everyone. David, Sorry about David that. loves the show so much, he listens to it while we actually do it live. <laughs> the, we got a question from a listener a few weeks ago, and if, it, to, if it's okay with you, I will pull it up because... It was a great one, and I think it's very relatable. Even if you are not a, a business owner, I think it's something that I think we can all relate to. And it comes from a listener. Uh, she says, I'll, I'll cut the compliments. I'll just go straight to the question. Um, <laughs> my struggle is sometimes applying <laughs> these concepts that you talk about to business. I own a uh, well, okay, she has 30 to 35 employees, and she has a hard time confronting employees when they are not fulfilling what I've asked. She feels more times than not she chooses not to confront, and then when she does confront, it doesn't go over well. She gets upset. She gets angry that she, you know, people are not listening to her, and she feels that she's being reasonable. She's looked at her agenda, but she really feels legitimately like these are things that need to get done for business sake. And I'm sure even if you're not a business worker, if you work with a team of people, you have kids at home, family, you know, you, you ask, you know that certain things need to get done. They're not getting done. So she's saying, can, can we talk about managing employees or somehow, you know, you working on your tikkun, I guess, working on what your soul came here to do, what's what, confronting. Right. Tikkun is your soul's correction, what exactly. you came to correct. Co working on yourself and at the same time making sure life gets done. Sure, sure. And, and I know that, David, you're always giving us examples from business, so maybe you want to take the, 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 with the question, lead on this one. With questions like, the, like these, like when we get them in live classes, what I love is it's very hard to answer that question just based on the question she asks because... If she's running into a wall with her employees, there's something deeper. Because why would the creator send her challenging employees, right? Why would the creator, why would the universe, why is her soul attracting uh, employees that are making it difficult for her to run her business? And why can't she just fire them also, right? She obviously doesn't want, so that, that we, I would want to question her more to get to the, 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 the root of the problem because I would also want to know, does she have similar challenges in her marriage or similar challenges with past relationships, past partners? Is this her second business? Does she run into this before? Right. Because if this pattern is following her around, it has something to do with a transformation that the creator wants from her because the creator wants to give more. She might be micromanaging. She might be controlling too much. Uh, employees who talk back and don't listen to their bosses often get fired. So why isn't she firing them? I want to I want to know mm -hmm. deeper to be able to understand that question. And that is kind of the answer. As all of us are listening, is if I'm re if I'm getting the same kind of problem over and over again, uh, I gotta really dig deep and ask myself, what am I still holding on to? What kind of negativity or fear am I still holding on to that I'm not letting go? Well, that, David, I, I know he didn't do it on purpose. He just naturally spews nuggets like this, but he basically said what we, one of the main points we want to deliver in today's show is when, when the universe sends you challenges, it's not a punishment. It's not a sign that you're doing something wrong. I actually, I had another email. We got another email last, after last week's show where somebody was saying, you know, I feel like I'm finally 
expressing my <clears throat> doing what's difficult for her. We're stepping out of this woman is stepping out of her comfort zone, doing things even though it's not the popular thing to do, setting boundaries, <clears throat> following her heart, and yet people are upset around her. Right. And 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 she's worried that that's a bad sign. Here comes Kabbalah. Here comes David and Elisha now and saying not only not only does Kabbalah say it's not a bad sign. You need to know that if you're doing something important. Significant. I mean, I think about the the lineage of of Kabbalists, what they had to go through so that we could have a show like this right. <laughs> and reach tens of thousands of people every week. It's it's persecution. It, bore, it I mean, it's been people have been persecuted in in order to do not only what's important for their soul, but what their soul came to achieve for the world. We get this question all the time. I, I'm doing what I know is right. Why am I getting? this negative feedback, or why isn't it not going my way? And one answer that we, that we share with our audience is when you do a positive action to move forward to your next level, there's a, there's a gate between your current level and your next level. It's a barrier. And everything in life has these barriers between the current level, which is the level I've earned, the level I get to enjoy, and the next level, which is something I feel I want it to be part of my life, but I'm not there yet. Every time we try to go to our next level, this barrier must be crossed. And this barrier is, is dark, it's confusing, it's uninspiring. All these emotions that we feel, it's an indication we're crossing a barrier to our next level. If our next level was comfortable and familiar, it would not be our next level, we say this, it would be our current level. Right. Every time I'm, I'm forced to go into this unknown space, you will always have to go through this very dark period. And what that feels like are all the feelings that you think that maybe you're going down the wrong path. Or not only that, sometimes it's people that are, you know, I, I've seen in my own life and in the, the lives of people that I work with, when a, a person says, you know, this behavior that I, this quality in me, I'm going to transform it or I'm going to work on this bad habit I have. And they work on it. People are like, well, what happened to the old you? Why aren't you the, the pushover you like, used to yeah. be? Why aren't you the, the people pleaser you used to be? Well, guess what? Just because people don't like the transformation doesn't mean the transformation is the wrong thing to do. Almost all my students on the path of Kabbalah kind of experience the same thing. They come, they transform very quickly, by the way. The things that they've been working on for 10, 20, 30 years, they transform in two, three, four weeks. Uh, their friends and everybody around them are slightly upset because... They don't get to uh, have evil speech the way they used to. They don't have that <laughs> needy friend calling them all the time. They don't have. They can't share and bask in the chaos and the drama anymore, right? The friends are first upset and negative, and then the the next phase, the third phase, is the friends actually realize that this is the secret that sauce to happiness. They realize that their friend, even though transformed and unidentifiable, is what they also strive to have. And then they get inspired and they come on the path. As long of as their ego doesn't get in the way of them finally admitting that their friend was right all along and they, they know the secret sauce. I, I think that that's maybe the first, uh, the first perspective that it, this week the universe is really asking us to look at the challenges that we have in our lives and understand that the universe is rigged to send us those challenges not as punishment. No, and by the way, lack of challenges isn't a reward, right? That it's not the universe saying you're behaving, so you don't need challenges, yeah, right? Right? <laughs> I, you're, I, you're so spiritual, we're not going to give you challenges. Exactly, and I, and and that's something else I see in in classes is that people say, "Well, listen, I'm I'm doing every I'm I'm following the teachings, I'm living my life according to what you're sharing, and yet things are still going wrong." Uh, things going wrong is no indication that you are doing something wrong. Challenge, according to Kabbalah, challenges come to get us to our next level. It's, it's actually the more spiritual prowess that you show, the more you show the universe that you can handle those challenges. The challenges aren't there to throw us under the bus. They're there to, for you know the, that story about the donkey that gets thrown in the pit and they try to bury him and every, every <laughs> shovel of dirt that falls on his back, he shakes it off and steps up on it. <laughs> That's the visual of this week, everybody. Imagine yourself at every shovel of dirt that the universe throws at us. You're meant to shake the dirt off your back, step up onto it, and eventually you'll be out of that that pit. B besides the fact that the wisdom of spiritual wisdom of Kabbalah validates what I'm about to share, 
I like to observe people and what they do and what works and what doesn't work. And a common You're a sociology major. I am you? a sociology there major. You go. That is correct. And 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 a common thread that I have seen amongst all very successful people, whatever success means, it can be in arts or business or people who have successful relationships where the relationship keeps going strong, is they have found a way, and this is where we all need to reach, where they have found a way to not just intellectually know this, but in their hearts, they have programmed themselves that a challenge is something pleasurable. So a challenge occurs and they don't automatically freak out and second guess themselves, go into a whole drama and get reactive. They actually get excited somehow. They're wired this way that this challenge is going to bring them closer to their soulmate, uh, closer to their partner, closer to success. Um, I, I, one of my mentors a long time ago, <clears throat> when I just started studying Kabbalah, a mentor in business, he was, a, he was probably twice my age. I was, I was late teens and he was twice my age. And I used to follow him everywhere. I followed him for a month. I, I literally went to go live with him and followed him everywhere. And I went to all the business meetings. And I watched him and he's very, very successful. And I watched him. Be- meetings didn't go right. People canceled on him. Projects fell through. And we would be walking to the car and he'd be like, I'm really excited now. I said, <laughs> well, I said, and everything what, just- What, are you sadistic? Yeah, exactly. And I didn't know Kabbalah really that well then. He's like, you don't understand. I have seen that every time I get bad news, it's really something really good's going to happen. Like he, he already knows this. And so when things were always going his way, he actually wasn't as excited. He was appreciative because we can't say, we can't want things to always go bad. We need to want them to go good, want them to go well, but also when they don't go our way, he was always so genuinely motivated. And this is a level of consciousness that we can all desire to reach. And once you reach it, you break down the barriers one by one and you just blaze through life as opposed to constantly banging your head on this barrier for years. It's not just, I I, I see a lot of people that are not only banging their head you know, looking for, I, and it's funny because when you think about it, why, why, where do you think the perception that when things go my way, it's a good thing comes from? Because we're all programmed to receive pleasure. We all came to this. We all want pleasure. We're meant to receive pleasure. That's what the Kabbalists say. The Creator wants to give us pleasure. So as soon as we're receiving pleasure, it makes sense to us. This is the way it's supposed to be. But there's a phase in between. Right. So th- I, I see that a lot of people, when things don't go their way, they get angry right. or they get upset or they get discouraged. And, and hopefully, I, I, definitely, you know, I, I, I know that a lot of people ask in the comments even, well, how do you get to that level? How do you get to that level? It takes practice, right? <laughs> David's talking about somebody who was probably walking that walk for many years, you know, right. learning it wasn't and born that way. Right. None of us are born that way. Really learning to reflect and understand, okay, wait a second. The, the fact that this didn't go my way isn't any, not only isn't it, is it not an indication that I did the wrong thing, but it's actually an indication that I am on the right path. That, that nothing, really nothing that was ever impactful, whether personally or for the world, went, went, went I don't know, like this. And, and I do think that once in a while things do have that kind of magic Right, that's something that you're working on. You look back and you say, "Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be," or, "Or I didn't expect everybody around the table to agree like that." That's not necessarily an indication that something wrong is happening. Right. But we're talking this week about looking around, looking at our lives, looking at what we're working towards, and recognizing that those barriers or obstacles are actually a blessing, actually, actually full of light. I, I talked to a. a, a a personal trainer who is, who, who trains um, different types of very athletic people. And some of the people that he trains are tier one, tier one like uh, <coughs> Navy SEALs and, and, and those tier one operators at the highest level of our, of our military. And I asked, I asked, can you tell me about them? What's their mindset like? He said, he said and when it comes to the work they do, they're just wired completely differently. They do not under, they do not think pain in any way is bad. They have no limitations. Everything is mind over body. And they've been programmed that, day, that way, or they're born even that way, uh, in that specific area. And that's why they can accomplish what normal humans cannot accomplish. They have just wired their brains, or maybe they were born that way, that bad is not bad. And a challenge is, is exciting. 
Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to operate at the level they operate. He said it's just a whole different new type of wiring. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, if we can wire ourselves this way, train ourselves, build this muscle in every part of life, then what challenge would ever make you sad, jealous, angry? What, we, would, we, we, would we be wasting any time moping and in our garbage and blaming others, which is the manifestation of of not breaking through blaming our own problems. Blaming others or blaming God. Right. We always, if you're blaming someone for something, including mean, God, including God, <laughs> it means that you gave up on breaking through your own wall. So once people uh, don't break through their fear, the second phase of that is I'll blame others because you can't actually, the ego can't handle rejection. So what the ego does, if it can't break through itself, is it says, well, it's that guy's fault, or this, or the economy, or my parents, or my this, or my that, or that's just, or me, or even blaming myself is also another manifestation of, of not doing my own personal work. Take a moment right now, uh, wh wherever you're listening, however you're listening, I'm sure we all know people that are struggling in their lives with you know, a challenge that seems insurmountable or a, a person. I know we, we get emails all the time about how, how do I deal with this difficult person? I, I know we all know somebody that is facing a challenge or cha multiple challenges that it seems impossible or sometimes even not worth it to keep fighting. Take a moment, tag them in the comments, you know, share the show with them so that they can also, I mean, every time, every time we finish a show and we've given this, these suggestions, I think to myself, imagine if a thousand people had that mindset, a thousand more people had that mindset this week, 2000 more, 20,000 more. Let's see what kind of impact we can have on, on other people's lives in the world. Absolutely. And our, our audience is growing every week thanks to you. Um, and we're, we're getting new people who don't even know about the wisdom of Kabbalah uh, following our show and listening to our, our podcast. I have a question here. And I'm about to give a tool also of how to, one tool I shared with you a little bit in the car, one tool that we can help achieve the strength and mindset to be able to break through challenges. We'll share that in a moment. Uh, question I got here is, how do you overcome, oh, the questions are coming so fast. How do you overcome guilt when you achieve something you dream of? Practical tools, give us some practical tools to combat this opponent that, that gets us. So it says that the opponent, we each, we each have an opponent, like a negative force that is kind of our personal trainer building us. Uh, the personal trainer looks like he's against you, but he's also hoping you succeed, right? He's making it difficult for you. But he wants Might you to Might even achieve. insult you, call you a sissy, et cetera. <laughs> right, exactly. In order to get you to feel like you have something to fight for. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So so it says that the opponent either attacks you uh, with, the, with the head or the tail, meaning first he tries to get you in the beginning, and if he can't get you in the beginning, he gets you in the end. What does that mean? The first thing the opponent does is tries to make you lazy, tries to make you not fulfill your soul's potential, the authentic you. So if you want to achieve something in your life, you have an inspiration. This inspiration comes to you from your soul, from the creator. You move towards it. The opponent says no. The opponent gets other people to put you down. The opponent takes away your financial resources to do it so you think it's impossible. The opponent rips the inspiration away from you so you're not motivated. The opponent gives you a bad back or a bad leg or whatever to make you feel like you got probably should focus. On, huh? Yeah, an excuse to focus on something else. This is what the opponent does. Let's say you overcome all of that because you have powerful consciousness, you have certainty, you see the vision, you have the imagination of your future, and you push through that, and you break through, and you achieve it. So it says then the opponent hits you with a tail. He says, well, now that you have this success, uh, you don't really deserve it. Look at all the people who don't have what you have. You know, how could you take it from that? Like, the opponent starts to throw guilt, fear, shame, and then you have a new level of the opponent to overcome. It's another barrier which it's very positive, so it's not a bad thing. That guilt, that fear, that shame, these are all negative qualities that we must transform. So what would be a tool, let's say, in the second phase? What, what, what tool would you suggest to someone who has achieved success or has a great relationship? I know many people who sabotage once they get something good. They can't handle having something good in their lives. And this not being able to handle actually prevents them from having it. And even when they get it, they immediately ruin it. What would you suggest for people like that? I, I think that that mindset, right, this, the focus on the self, me, I can't handle it or I don't deserve it, that's one of the biggest traps. The, the, the connectivity, the, the unification that we fail to see in the universe, right? Why is the universe giving it to me? Whatever blessing, whatever. It could even be a soulmate, right? right? Why do I get my soulmate right now? The universe is looking at me saying, 
how is having you having your soulmate going to make you more powerful out there in the world? And and this is this is a great kind of link to the other part of the piece that we wanted to talk about today is that you everything that you receive in the world is for not for you alone. The universe wants to see, okay, you're about to land the two million dollar year. How are you going to use those two million dollars not for yourself alone? And 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 I know you could say, well, I'm going to give charity. How can you give charity with your soulmate? Wait, what are you going to loan your soulmate out to people who don't have a soulmate every so often? <laughs> That's not uh, right. That, and and I think there's a lot of things loan out there. Loan my soulmate out. Right, I'm, I, obviously, I'm joking, but there's a lot of desires that we have. You mm-hmm. know, looking at this person who who pushes toward their dream is about to manifest it, and then self sabotages or falls into the self doubt or the self deprecation. Think for a moment about how you are going to be able to be more caring, more kind, more generous, more thoughtful, more more influential in the world because you have this blessing. All right, so let's be clear about the tool that you're sharing here. You're saying once you have a blessing, and we all have some degree of pleasures and blessings <clears throat> that the Creator has given us, the way to maintain those blessings is to somehow ensure that those energies are moving us forward towards sharing, adding value, and maybe increased spiritual growth, right? It can be anything, by the way. I mean, when David says even adding value, right, that's, if I want a million dollars because I want to sleep on a bed of a million dollar bills, Mm -hmm. right, the odds that the universe is going to support me in my quest for a million dollars is minimum because I am simply looking for security. But if I recognize that that my increased security will allow me to be more generous, more thoughtful, more kind, I'll be less preoccupied with what's wrong with me, then maybe there is a reason. uh, uh, That's maybe the first level, right? Why would the universe give it to me? Well, I'll be less preoccupied with myself. That's level one. Level two, why would the universe give it to me? Maybe because I will share from it. Maybe because I will use, I, I'm going to get involved in some sort of charitable cause or I'm going to mentor other people in my field. But understand that the, the, the system is rigged so that the more expansive you think and the more value you're focused on adding to the world, the more support you're going to get from the universe. If the creator gave you right now the blessing of air conditioning in this room, well, how would you use that for, for something positive? I would share more powerful wisdom uh, on the weekly energy boost. I think, I think we'd probably be able to speak even better. <laughs> In, 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 in. <laughs> All right. So, I'd be less shiny on the camera. <laughs> you, you wouldn't be sweating on, on the camera. So let's break that down into two simple things. You receive something. How do you ensure that you can keep it forever? Well, you asked me the question, by the way. The deal looks like it's going to go south now, right? I worked on it. I worked on it. It was happening. It was happening. And then towards the end of the deal, the doubts start to come, the fears, the whatever barriers I personally that, that my pattern tends to show up. You asked me, how would I? Well, no, the question is, you've got the deal. How can I make sure that I keep the blessings and I grow from that platform even higher? So same answer. Well, I was going to summarize. <laughs> I was going to summarize the bottom line of what you said for all of our listeners. Bottom line is two things you should always remember to be able to maintain your blessings. Number one, how can I use this to share and create value in the world? Number two, how can I make sure that this blessing is furthering my own transformation, helping me overcome myself, and not adding more negativity, not making me feel like I'm better than other people, not making me actually become more comfortable and not work as much. So blessings can either take a person away from their spiritual growth or they can motivate you. Oftentimes, when you get something you want, you slow down. Make sure that whatever you're getting is, is pushing you to grow even more and not causing you to slow down and now be comfortable because you now got it. You made it. That's one way. That is the summarized way of how we can maintain and hold on to our blessings. Well, I also want to hear from you guys. I mean, we have some great questions here, but maybe there's things that you're working towards that you desire that you are putting an effort toward creating or establishing that you're not sure how to make that for the sake of, of sharing, for the sake of adding value or influencing others for good. So maybe one of the things we can do is go through a list of uh, 
quests, you know, and see if we can help people see how to transform it. I know that one thing, if, if you are feeling stuck, and, and this is maybe a little bit of a, what's the word, triangulation, we may have to reroute after I say what I'm about to say, but one of the things that gets us stuck, and oftentimes it is in business or it's stuff related to family, is when we do things out of obligation. Mm-hmm. And this week is also going to demand from us that we look at the things that we do out of obligation and inject more meaning and consciousness and light into it. I mean, many things that we do out of obligation, we can't just say, screw it, I'm not doing it anymore. But there are ways to elevate and uplift those things that will definitely make a difference. What Alisha is saying, another element of it is this week, we, we get this consciousness to put ourselves in a position where if you're going to do something positive or anything you're going to do, it's going to create value. It's very important that you do this from love and desire and excitement. Otherwise, this positive thing actually uh, doesn't manifest and it's a, it's a negative seed. So for example, if let's say you're, you're, let's say in a marriage or your partner, or your wife, or your husband ask you to do something and you feel like I have to do it because they asked me to take a moment to pause I remember just yesterday, my wife asked me to get something from downstairs. I was in the middle of something, and I got to go downstairs and get it. It was annoying. So I was like, okay, let me get this over with. I was supposed to pause, get excited about doing this, because that seven, eight seconds it takes you to do it, you can reveal this tremendous amount of light. And, if, and all it takes is a pause and switch your mindset. Pause, switch your mindset. And if you can do that all the time, you'll all of a sudden have the vibration of miracles. Well, I'm thinking about people that, you know, they let's say they take care of an aging relative, a parent or sure. somebody, and that's not something that you can say, you know what, guys, I'm out of here, right? Sure. But at the same time, it can feel like a burden. There's other, I mean, there's a million different, uh, there's people, stay-at-home moms, and there's a lot of, I think, family-related, and I, I use this word only because it's just the easiest word to use, burdens that we have, right? Going downstairs to get your wife something, that is a burden that David should have known by getting a two-story house that mm-hmm. may happen. But the, the, the I, I see so clearly, and it's easy to see when you're an innocent bystander and you're not in the midst of the movie, as, a, as the audience, I can see so clearly how so many people are carrying around this burden, this obligation, and all it, all they need to do is look at it as an opportunity to reveal light and their movie will shift. Very important. Very important that you never feel that you have to do something. Switch your mindset before you do it. Do it for your own health. It brings miracles. It gives you strength and energy. And it is part of our spiritual work that everything we do, we feel like there's love behind it. That doesn't mean just do things that are comfortable that you love. It means the things that you don't enjoy, that you know are good for you, get to a place where you can switch your mindset to enjoy it. That is very important. Maybe even pause the show right now and write down a list of all those things you do begrudgingly, out of obligation, yeah, think even about though it now. they're a burden. Don't, don't wait till after the show because you'll forget. We'll say something else and it'll... Make sure that this week you are taking all of those, it's like a bag of rocks that you yourself can lighten simply by the energy you put into it. And that, I can again, I can tell you from experience, I can tell you from the thousands of people I've worked with over the years, it is magical, really magical. We're getting a lot of great uh, questions here about how to manifest stuff. All right, I'm going to, as you read those questions and prepare a good one, I'll share the the uh, one tool to help strengthen our mind yes, and to break through blockages. <clears throat> so one of the, one of the men- things one of my mentors shared with me um, as I was on the path of Kabbalah, my, one of my Kabbalah mentors, is how important it is, this is from the teachings based on Rav Ashlag, that a person must constantly connect to their imagination which is kind of this vision that you have about who you are, what you're meant to achieve. It's something that's very deep inside of you. It's something that we access when we kind of have free time or we feel relaxed or we feel creative. You access this Someone says, sit down now and think about it. So now David is telling everybody, quick quick open eye meditation. Absolutely. And, And this is actually something that Karen Berg told me personally to do. She said every day I should take 30 minutes to an hour out of my day and do that which helps me just think. And 
visualize my future and things that I want and really access it. Because we're being bombarded by so much energy throughout the day and so many obligations. The list is so long. And we keep adding to it, right? We're all so booked and all so packed. It's crazy. It's more, we're more booked than ever. Two calendar apps on my phone. That's how booked I am. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it, it, and what happens is everything starts to suck your energy and drain you. And then you become robotic. And then you forget about your soul. You forget about your imagination. You forget about what you're really meant to do. Sometimes the opponent sends you success, small success, so you're numbed and not thinking about a bigger success. That's also how the negative side works, by the way. Gives you something small so that you're busy with it and you don't think of what you're really meant to do. So I personally now, for me, I, I do it best when I'm driving. I'm driving, I'm in the car by myself, nothing's really bothering me, I'm driving a distance. 30 minutes to an hour and I'm just talking to myself and I'm asking questions. What do I want? Do I like this? Do I not like this? What do I feel? What's my future? What do I think the creator wants from me? I ask the creator, what do you want from me? Am I doing the right thing, wrong thing? Just start to ask yourself questions. Not to question yourself, but ask questions and connect to this greater desire, this, 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 this vision of your success. And what will happen is you will draw what we call in Kabbalah the surrounding light, which is your potential light that you don't have yet, but it starts to surround you and it starts to push you towards that dream. If you're not thinking about it every day and looking for it, it cannot come to you. You'll be stuck in the rat race. And it's important also, you know, I, I imagine myself listening to you, let's say, newer, newer to the path of Kabbalah. If I would let my imagination go... 25, 30 years ago, immediately the voice would come in and say, oh, come on, that's not possible. Oh, don't even go. You know, your parents would freak out. Or, right. you know, like you have the thoughts that that come to you, obviously not the thoughts of your soul, that shut down that creative, imaginative, expansive part of you. And this is why this is why I think Kabbalah, having the system of Kabbalah, it's a filter I put everything through. Because what if your imagination says, well, you know what, you could be single or you could be this. Or you, it's all of a sudden you'll leave your family and leave your job and, you know, go across the world and do nothing. So you have to also be careful because your imagination tells you pleasures and things that it knows you, you should have in your life. But you got to put it through the wisdom of Kabbalah. you got to put it through that software <laughs> and that says, OK, my imagination tells me that I'm meant to travel a lot. Like, I want to see the world. So should I just get up now and spend all my money and do it? No. Put it through the software of Kabbalah. Kabbalah says everything in its time, restrict, make sure you're responsible, whatever. All the spiritual work of Kabbalah kind of puts it in there. So you have to have both. You juxtapose your dreams, your visions, your imaginations, but through the system of Kabbalah as we've learned it, which makes us grounded, responsible, and make sure we're doing the right thing at the right time. Because chaos comes from when you do the right thing at the wrong time. That's true chaos. What is, what's an example of doing the right thing at the wrong time? Um, I feel like ha- this person is in my life. I feel like they're my, they're my soulmate. I'm supposed to be with them forever. And so I'm going to do everything in my power now to rush this relationship. Right thing, wrong, time. wrong timing. Or this person hurt me and I need to tell them right now that they hurt me because I, 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 I've learned that I need to speak up and uh, it's part of my spiritual work. i got to speak up and tell this person. Otherwise, I'm just going to be abused my whole life. The right thing at the wrong time. Well, what is the right time? Put it through the software of Kabbalah. Kabbalah will tell you pause. Anytime you have to do something right now, don't do it's it. It's Kabbalah 1. It's Kab- you got to learn Kabbalah 1, and you'll know how to make decisions. You'll know how to deal with relationships. You'll know how to understand messages from the universe and challenges and whatnot. Otherwise, you're just running your life based on emotions, and you're going to be constantly guided in 100 different pathways, and nothing will really ever happen. Okay, so a few questions we have here. How can I, and this is genuine, right? We have somebody asking about two different, there's lots of different questions. Anyway, how can you use your soulmate? How can my desire for my soulmate be more expansive? How can it be less for me alone? I, in Kabbalah 3, I, I give three classes about it. And um, it's, it's, uh, I'll, I'll share one consciousness about it. I usually tell the, the men, especially in a relationship, that... No, they're not in a relationship. Oh, they're not in a relationship? This is a person oh, who wants their soulmate and isn't yet. 
isn't yet. How can I, we're talking on the show today about desiring, working towards having everything we have, not for selfish reasons, not for, okay. because it's going to, yeah, I want my soulmate because I'm going to be not alone. I'm going to be happier. I'm going to have someone to have a life with. How do you, how would having my soulmate benefit the world? Well, one secret that I learned from, from my teacher before, way, way back when was uh, the universe often sends you the right partner when you've already handled all the negativity of being single. So there are things that we need to transform about ourselves while single to merit a great relationship. Now, if we don't, we'll still get relationships, but those relationships will, will start to trigger and attack those things that we should have handled a long time ago. So the best course of action is keep auditing myself and say, what are breakthroughs that I need to have now? What are transformations I need to have now? As a single person, how do I need to shift my mindset? Have I healed my past? Have I healed my childhood? Do I still have grudges and blame? Okay, but why would the universe give me my soulmate? Once, I, well, once I've... I, I'm representing all yeah, the people asking yeah. this question. Once huh? I've corrected an aspect of myself, the, and I start to become comfortable as a single person, and I've, I've, I've worked on myself and I've evolved, when you have a partner, the, the spiritual work goes to a whole nother level because you can't escape anymore. You can I, still... I, that I know. Right. You can't escape. But how does that help the world? Because, and I know for a fact that the spiritual work I did after I got married was 100x of the spiritual work I did as a single person because a single person, you still are in control of your negativity. You can still, manip <laughs> you can still uh, spritz That's a little cologne. <laughs> spritz cologne on your negativity. You know, it's like, it's like you're dating. You see the person once or twice a week. You can always put your best foot forward. But when you're committing yourself to someone day in and day out and they live with you and they're with you and they see you and they see the whole you and they call you out on stuff, you're forced to either transform or reject the person. Most people reject their partner. They don't realize that the partner is a mouthpiece of the creator and, uh, and a very accurate one, by the way, mm -hmm. to, to constantly highlight that which is requiring transformation. And when you transform, do you know that's huge for the world? That's huge. As a boss, you want to be refined and your partner can help you refine you. Your soulmate can help refine you. As, a, as an employee, you need to be refined and your partner can help you do that. I mean, it's endless. It's endless. Okay. But do not get annoyed with your partner. It's very important <laughs> that you don't look at your partner as the person who doesn't understand you and not appreciating you. And appreciate. Here's a big secret. Everyone's trying to get appreciation from their partner. And I'll tell you right now, if you're looking for that, you're limiting yourself because you got to learn how to have self-love and stop trying to steal appreciation from other people. Once you have self-love, everyone will appreciate you. But if you're looking for people to say nice things to you all the time and appreciate you and your partner doesn't respect you, whatever, you're, you're, you're limiting yourself. You're not doing spiritual work. Allow the person to just strengthen you and be self-reliant energetically. Then... When it's coming from you, there'll be harmony and he or she will respect you and love you and then you evolve this soulmate relationship. All right, next. Next, expansive desire. Help, help me expand the desire of wanting a better job. Uh, can you be more clear? I want a better job. I'm not getting a better job. We're talking in the show about, you know, why would the universe give me something I desire if I only want it for me? Right. How can I expand my desire? Okay. One of the reasons why people are stuck in a position or a job is they're not doing what we shared, which is the imagination part. They're not really connecting to what they really want. They're sending confusing signals to the universe. On one hand, they say they want to leave. On the other hand, they're addicted to the paycheck or they have fears around leaving. So the universe always mirrors you and shadows your desires and your consciousness. You may think you want to go, but if you really look deep down in your heart, you're loving the fact that you can stay. You don't want to leave those, that group. You don't want to leave the job security. You don't want to leave your health benefits. You don't, <clears throat> you, you're not so sure of your own powers and abilities. So that internal conflict is causing a person to be stuck. One of the things we talked about a few weeks ago as we began the month of Scorpio is that it's going to be a month of extremes. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, lots of love for all our Scorpio listeners out there. Of course, it's nothing personal, but the the tendency is to look at the world in this month as 
it's the end of the world, right? It's the end of the world as we know it. That's what we should play on the outro. The There is a lot of, um, I think, let's put it this way. If you're listening to the show, chances are you have an inkling of spirituality and there is a, a desire within you to to unlimit yourself, unlimit your consciousness, et cetera, even if you, you haven't studied Kabbalah before. But you represent like 0.001 of the population, and there's a lot of people out there that are just trying to be number one, just trying to you know uh, keep up with the Joneses, trying to destroy the competition, whether it's competition in dating, competition in business, whatever yeah. it is. Sure. So take, you know, like David said, run it through the filter of Kabbalah. Bear in mind that everybody is now really operating out of fear and desire to control rather than this expansive nature, right? And and that's one of the reasons that it's it's like the the antidote antidote exists in the poison, mm-hmm. right? This is the month in which there is that what's going to be about me and how am I going to survive and you know maybe I should just throw in the towel and this isn't worth it and I'm going to oh look my ex-boyfriend has somebody else I'm going to blackmail him with pictures of I don't I don't know everybody sure. get, is going I, I, at least from where what I see people are really going nuts in the same month we have the antidote this this the universe wants us this week to say you know what I can rise above I can elevate nice. the the darkness is simply I think we said it a couple of weeks ago it's it's the smoke and mirrors the universe is really trying to see how am I going to respond how much have I learned how much have I grown since the last time I was in this position and am I able to do it for the sake of sharing, do it with light, do it with love, do it with the goal of adding value and not just getting things done. And and the reason I'm bringing it up is because I see a lot of people asking about doubts, fears, um, you know, I see again, fears. It's a lot of, there's a lot of scary not a coincidence that Halloween usually falls in the month of Scorpio. I'm saying there's a lot of fears and worries in this month because things do seem extremely I wanna, dark. So I want to summarize these four powerful points that we've shared, including the fourth one you just shared. <clears throat> Number one, this week's energy helps us to, to, ha- to have a new consciousness about pain and challenges, to get to a place where I internalize that challenges are stepping stone get excited about them, and let them motivate you. Let challenges motivate you. <clears throat> That's an energy this week that we can internalize it. Number two, you spoke about it. Stop doing things from obligation. Pause. Find a way to enjoy. If you're going to do it, do it with enjoyment. If you're going to do it out of obligation, better not to even do it. It's a waste of time. It's causing chaos. Unless it's going to hurt somebody else if you don't do it. Don't just don't go grocery shopping this week because... Because you don't love it and then everyone starves. Right. That We are not advocating irresponsibility. We're really advocating transformation, elevation, expansion. Everything you do from a place of obligation eats away at your soul, drains you, and takes you backwards spiritually. Find a way to do the things you have to do with love. Get yourself excited. It's your responsibility. No one else is going to motivate you. Number three, we talked about making every blessing in our life have some component of sharing and adding value to the world. Don't let it end with you. Don't don't let don't just take from it. Right. No, without you need to share your little formula you shared with me in the car. Oh yes, we, uh, that will be the fifth thing. Okay. Hopefully, we share. Okay. And the other thing that you shared, uh, that we both shared, was somehow this new blessing you got, make sure it, it, it facilitates your transformation and your fears. It doesn't feed it. So for example, if you got an inheritance, wealth came your way, don't just, uh, don't, hoard. don't just hoard. Don't go uh, to uh, brothels. Save it, saving it for a rainy day. Also not necessarily, you know, expecting the worst, waiting for the... Yes, don't, don't let it make you uh, afraid now everybody is going to take from you, right? It can actually accentuate your negativity. Right. Let it transform you. Don't let it, uh, don't let it weaken you. Mm-hmm. The fourth thing you just said is fear-based motivation is a shaky foundation. If fear often causes us to not do something, which is really bad, but when you do something from fear, it's also a very rickety, shaky foundation. Right. Eventually, even if you build something great, it's going to crumble. Find a way, even if you have to slow down a little bit, to do things from love, 
to do things from, the, from, a, from a more pure place. Not because you're afraid, not because you want to prove something to someone, not because nobody loved you as a child, not because you, every, everyone second-guessed you and now you want to prove them wrong. This ends up with a lack of blessings. The fifth thing I'll say, we, we have only one minute. I'll just mention it. We won't elaborate too much. True sharing equals uh, giving minus taking equals sharing. This is a much deeper class. Maybe we can go into it more next we week. totally should. I'm writing but, it down. But people want to know, I'm giving, I'm giving. How come I'm not seeing blessings? Because you're also taking in some way. You have some kind of an agenda. You're looking for something back, back in return. You're, you're giving from fear. There's a taking element. Giving minus taking equals sharing. And we can talk about that more next time. All right. You don't have to wait for us to go live or look for us on Facebook in order to find us. We can find you. By you subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, CastBox, or Stitcher. You can find us, of course, on YouTube, IGTV, and, of course, our beloved Facebook. We're here every Monday at 10 a.m. giving you the most powerful, most practical secrets to navigate through the seven days of the coming week. Our, our audience is growing because of you. If you feel like this has helped you and you can support us, share comment, like, engage with us. Subscribe. And Subscribe, rate, and review as well. That's right. And we will see you next week on the Weekly Energy Boost.